Thanks for watching Numbskull News. This is ranking Star Trek Part 2. Sorry about the length, but it's a lot of damn movies. Anyway, hope you enjoy it. And we start with the much maligned, The Final Frontier. And it's been maligned for good reasons. It's not very good. It kind of sucks. But I feel bad because I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and I've been pretty much killing Star Trek, at least the first four movies. I'm going to kill this one, by the way. But I'm going to say something nice to, to you know, kick this one off. That way I'm not too much of an asshole. There was a thread in the first four movies of uh, Captain Kirk, the pain that he's been dealing with. Uh, it was really apparent in uh, part two that he was feeling old. He had to have glasses on because he's allergic to retinox. And just feeling useless, you know, gallivanting through the galaxy. That's, that's for young guys, <laughs> is what he said. You know, he, he, he was... Uh, just down you know and he's got a lot of regrets that you find out you know he he had a son that he stayed away from his whole life and he regrets that and then right when you can think okay he can catch up with his son uh get a new uh father-son type of relationship with him he's killed <laughs> it sucks man and by the time you get to part five they kind of wrap that thread up when uh, Kirk and the, and the bad guy, Cybok, and no, that's not a Decepticon, that's uh, Spock's brother, apparently. Well, anyway, him and Cybok are talking, and Cybok's big thing is that he could take away your pain. You know, he has this mental ability because he's a Vulcan. He's developed this ability to be able to take away your darkest pain and free you from it. And... Of course, you become kind of a slave of his afterwards, but uh, with Kirk, it wasn't about becoming a sycophant of Cybok. It was about, you know, what he says is that, that that's his pain. He needs his pain. He is his pain. So he owns it. And I thought that was a great way to kind of wrap up uh, that whole thread. Unfortunately, it, it's surrounded by this movie. <laughs> All right, this is the same movie that makes uh, Scotty look like an Alzheimer's patient. You know, and uh, Uhura's doing a strip tease 25 years too late. A lot of tired, crappy humor that's not funny. It tries too hard. And like I said before, the movie suffers from a lack of heart. And it's really unfortunate, but hey, it is what it is. Serving with you. The next generation actually went out on a decently high note. It's not saying a lot. It's just a lot, uh, a lot of wasted, <laughs> wasted movies. Four movies that could have been a lot better. Um, Nemesis, you know, the stakes were raised a little bit. You actually get a feeling that a price is going to be paid if the good guys are going to win, and that's what happens. Uh, Tom Hardy, I mean, he he's a good villain. You know, he's playing a clone of Picard, which I, I, I love that I love that idea. But if if Nemesis was actually the worst of the next generation movies, this could you know, that whole four movie series could have ended up being five or six, and it could have been great. It could have been right up there with uh, the original cast. But you know, like I've said before, they they've they just wasted opportunities for greatness and that's that's maybe the kindest thing i can say about nemesis is at least it didn't feel like a waste of time it was actually a decent decent flick and i'm not going to go too too much further into it than that you know i've seen this movie about one and a half times it, it just saddens me that they ended on this note 
when it could have been so much better. You know, you could have had some Dominion War stuff in some of these Flint films. You could have had some crossover with DS9. But they chose this weak-ass way to go, and it just sucks. But Nemesis is the best they come up with, so there's that. Can you get this thing started? What, started? Yes. Flying, sir, that's a different thing. These old vessels, they were built in space. They were never supposed to take off from atmosphere. Make it happen. What can I say about Star Trek Beyond? It's a fun ride. I mean, it's really fun. Now, it's not going to get deep on you. It doesn't really add a whole lot to canon or anything like that. But uh, they have some great scenes in there. Like when they get that old USS Franklin up and flying again. I love that scene. And how about destroying that enemy swarm with uh, sabotage by the Beastie Boys? That's freaking awesome. I, I, it, it, it has a lot of fun stuff to it. Now my one big gripe is why the hell destroy the Enterprise again? Don't they realize that the Enterprise is, is a character all into itself? If you're going to destroy the Enterprise, you're killing off a major character. So don't do it unless you have, you know, it, 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 you got to earn that. You can't just willy-nilly kill it off. So that's a big gripe for Beyond for me. Uh, another one, I really like Idris Elba, but I thought he was a bit wasted in this movie. You could have casted pretty much anybody in that part. You're not really taking advantage of his acting prowess. Um, yeah, the swarm villain, I don't know. It, it's okay. Don't get me wrong, it's okay. It makes for that great, great scenes at the end when they're destroying it. But, I don't know. It, I, I would have much rather have seen like uh, the Doomsday Machine, you know, from the old Star Trek series. That would have been a cool callback. And having Idris Elba play the surviving captain of this derelict ship that barely survived the run-in with the Doomsday Machine. That would have been cool. But, you know, they went this way. And so, th therefore, I can't rank it, rank it any higher than that. But, it is a fun flick. You know, it is rewatchable. And really, all the Kelvin Timeline movies are pretty good. You know, people kind of bitch about it. You know, that it's not really moving the story forward from uh, Voyager or DS9. But, you know, hopefully one day they will. You know, but that'll take more of a, of a series than a series of films, you know. They need a TV series to really move that story forward. But for what this is, you know, that trilogy we got, and it seems like that's all we're going to get, uh, it was really good. And I thought Beyond was a, you know, a good addition so there you go. We finally get to some positive feedback on Star Trek. If I'm not in charge, our entire way of life is decimated. So you want me off this ship? You better kill me. You sort of let me sneak back. Benedict Cumberbatch, he's no Ricardo Montalban, but he still gives a great and violent performance as Khan. You know, and Peter Weller, he plays a great villain as well. I love how they kind of mix the concepts with uh, Weller's character from uh, The Undiscovered Country. So you have the Wrath of Khan and The Undiscovered Country, those kind of concepts mixed in with some, uh, what are they, Troubles or whatever the hell they're called, little furry bastards. <clears throat> so they got a lot of good stuff well, good callbacks here, which I I enjoy. I, I like the nostalgia whenever you can mix it in, which is one of the problems with Beyond. You didn't really get that, but you get it. You get a ton of it here, and I I just love it. And uh, Litter Nemo, he makes his last appearance as Spock. No one ever talks about that, but yeah, that's his very last appearance. And uh, I love the way he sets up Khan. You know, alluding to how evil this guy is. You got to watch out for him. And this is probably the best action you're ever going to see in a Star Trek movie. I mean, the, you got chase scenes, you got s space battles, hand-to-hand -hand combat, you got Spock losing his shit. 
<laughs> I mean, it's it's got it's got pretty much everything. Now, I've seen it two, three times, and I I, I want to see it again. I'm doing this video, and I want to watch this movie again. It's just really good. It, it it gets shit on a lot. It gets shit on a lot. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't really have a gripe. Now you may say, well, look, man, you got it ranked at number seven. Rank it higher if you love it so much. Well, the thing is, from here on out, we actually have a lot of great Star Trek stuff. I mean, just great movies, and which says a lot. I mean, we start out with the crap, of course, but from this point forward, we're really getting a ton of good movies. That says a lot about this franchise, and you can go seven, you know, even eight. I'll include Beyond as a good movie. But eight good movies, and then you get into greatness? I, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I, I really enjoyed the Kelvin timeline stuff. I thought it was very creative. I thought they did a tremendous job casting these guys. And in this movie in particular, like I said, I, I love the villains. I thought, I thought these are some of the best villains that they came up with in the Kelvin timeline. It's probably some of the best villains in all of Star Trek, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a few, but just individual characters, fantastic. Like I said, I'm a big Peter Weller fan, though. Big RoboCop fan, so I love it anytime I see this guy being utilized. Because he's been so underutilized throughout his entire career. I just love it when I actually get to see him and they let him loose. You know, they let him be either the good guy or the bastard that he is and he plays a great bastard in this and there's always room for a great bastard The thing that sucks the most these days is everyone has to criticize the hell out of everything. Whether it's something new or something old, doesn't matter. And the motion picture is no different. It gets criticized for not for being too boring. Not enough action. If it's got too much action, then it's just too stupid, right? And if it has not enough, then it's just too boring. What people don't understand is this is pure sci-fi. This is high concept stuff. Now, it's like it could have been written by Carl Sagan or Arthur C. Clarke. And I'm sorry if you're too stupid to really enjoy and, and understand this movie. But it's great. And it took a lot of balls because they made this movie in, a, in reaction to uh, Star Wars A New Hope and how big that was. And so... Paramount said, "Man, we gotta, we gotta be able to match that somehow." And wow, hey, we got Star Trek. Already got a built-in fan base. Let's make a movie. And this is the movie they make. <laughs> and like I said, it's more of akin to 2001: A Space Odyssey than it is uh, to Star Wars. And in a lot of ways, this is going to get a little off track, but hear me out. In a lot of ways. This reminds me of uh, Metallica's and Justice for All album. It's not their best album, but it was their last real thrash album. And in that last effort, they took all of their talents and took it to the extreme. All right, as, as if to say, okay, everyone else thought y'all were doing thrash. Let's show you just how far you can take it from a songwriting capability. You know, writing eight, nine, ten minute songs and not have them feel like eight or nine or ten minute songs is incredible. And just the technical prowess they showed on that album is far beyond what anyone else could do. And I mean anybody. And that's kind of what the writers and the director here did for Star Trek The Motion Picture. It's like, oh, okay, you like all the cutesy stuff? We're going to give you you know, just pure hard driving sci-fi right here in your face. Because Star Wars really isn't science fiction. Alright, it's not. It's more of a fantasy action adventure. This is pure sci-fi. And it still looks great. And it still sounds great. 
even today, you know, what, 30 something years later. So like I said, it's not my favorite Star Trek movie. I really wanted to rate this thing higher. I, I just, you know, I couldn't. It, it, it's, ugh, it depends on what day you catch me on. Some days I might put it fourth or fifth. You know, definitely inside the top five, but this is well within that border. I got it here at number six. Tomorrow I'll probably have it at number three. Who the hell knows? But it's a great movie. It's a great movie. It's a work of art to me. So if you're one of these people that have skipped on it, you know, you stick with Wrath of Khan or Voyage Home or something, give this one a watch. You'll enjoy it. So thanks again for watching this. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back with part three with the top five Star Trek movies of all time, according to yours truly. Until then, bye.